So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the sci-fi generator effect, which looks very cool and it looks very complicated, but really it is one of the most simple effects that we can make. So let me show you what's going on behind the scenes and then uh, let's make it ourselves. So behind the scenes, it looks like, whoa, there's this crazy thing going on here. Uh, but really, you know, it's just some geometry nodes and I have a camera orbiting around it. And really what I could do is just have the mesh itself rotate, but you see what I'm going for, right? It's just a bunch of nonsense that when you render it using the right, you know, settings, it's going to look dope, okay? Let's make the thing. So in geometry nodes, well, not yet. In Blender, what we want to do is immediately go into geometry nodes, and that's where we're going to be spending the majority of our time. So take the cube, geometry nodes, create a geometry nodes group. And the name of the game is, again, as always with all these tutorials, making the node network here that gives us the results we want. Well, if you think about it, I basically had these two kind of spiky circles and a thing going in between them. So let's start by making the spiky circle. And the way I found this is just by experimenting, right? So I'll just show you what I came up with. Uh, you start with a mesh circle. So you have a circle, uh, maybe with a bit more geometry, like 100 vertices, so it's cleaner. Uh, we're going to take it and give it some, you know, geometry, more than just edges. So we're going to extrude the mesh along its edges. And immediately you could see we have a ring that we can control the size of and also the inner radius as well. Okay, so this is kind of like the base of our spiky thing. And we now want to have this thing pointing upwards in this way that looks interesting. The way you do that is with another <laughs> extrude mesh set to faces because now we want extrude faces. And the key insight is you want individual selected um, so that when you look at this, each face that's being extruded is its own thing. Okay. Why is this important? Because if I was to say extrude it not by the same number by but by some random number, you could see now it creates the spiky thing. If this was not individual, it's going to try to keep it as one kind of continuous uh, mesh. So enable individual, it's going to look better. Um, and also, I don't necessarily want to use random value because it's just going to you know do something like this. I want a continuous source of randomness. So what I ended up using is a noise texture. Um, Okay, what does that mean? That means that if I take my noise texture and set it to four dimensional, not only does it look random, but we can kind of have it flow in this way that makes sense, right? So I'm just going to play around with some settings, especially a map range node, uh, to make sure that we get a good amount of variation in the height, such that when we animate it, it looks uh, good. So you want to play with the scale, something like that. I, found, I find that something like this looks good. And the uh, two most important things to play with is the noise quality and the number of vertices, which is kind of like the amount of smoothing uh, that you get for this. So I'm going to bring down the radius, play with the W. Okay, I like the look of that. If anything, I want it to be less continuous, so I'm going to up the roughness. There we go. Okay, uh, to, get, to get this thing animated, we want the W to be changing over time, so I'm just going to map that to seconds. So as time evolves, it's going to be doing this thing. And this is kind of like the beginning to our thing. If you wanted it to look more complicated, by the way, simple thing we could do is we can use a scale elements node on the top. And you can see what this does is it does this kind of pinching effect. What this is doing is we are looking at the extrude mesh. I want to say, give me the faces on the top. So basically these newly created faces. And I want those, that's why I'm connecting it to the selection. I want those to be scaled, right? And this is something that we can do randomly like that. And now this looks much more like a generator and much more dynamic, whatever that means. It kind of looks like the teeth of that worm in Dune. Okay. Either way, I want uh, two of these, one on the top and one on the bottom. We could create two of them or we could be lazy and just kind of copy one into the other. So I'm adding a transform and then joining it back so that the version I transform, you can literally see I'm just rotating it. It's going to use the same logic, moving it upwards. And now we have two of these. Maybe uh, let's offset this with some Z rotation, so it's not exactly kind of parallel in some sense. And beyond that, I think I am happy with this. It's really just going to be a matter of getting the right camera angle and all that, um, and also getting the right settings. Maybe bring down the roughness a little, and also make the scale elements less intense. So something like that, and maybe one final thing is I'm going to make the animation faster. So... If we multiply time, you can see it's going slower, and now it's going faster. So something like 30% faster. 
Okay, cool. Next order of business is the beam of light going uh, through it. Um, once I'm happy with these settings. Yes, the uh, beam of light going through it, which is going to light our scene. We just need to join one more thing in the geometry, and we're going to be good. It's going to just so happen, because we want this thing to pulse, I want procedural control over it. It's going to be easiest to do with a curve line. So you can see I make this curve line taller, and you can kind of see it right there, this black line. That is our uh, curve line going from uh, bottom to top. How do we give this thing thickness? Well, we need to turn it into a mesh, so curve to mesh using a profile of a circle, let's say. And you can see, whoa, we have a <laughs> we have a big cylinder in our thing. So let's make that skinnier. American beauty standards, am I right? Um, we now have a skinny cylinder in here, and I guess let's set up the lighting, and then we'll get it to pulse. And if we give this thing a special material, we go to the shading workspace. So right now, if we look at this from our cycles thing it's just going to look like a plain thing right nothing too interesting uh, but because the cylinder has a material that we can call emission the idea is we set the emission to be some kind of bluish sci-fi color and bring up the strength by a lot and this is what's going to light our scene and make it look you know super dope in fact, let's get rid of all the environment lighting. So it's only generated by this. So you can see this is a cool way to get the uh, effect. Uh, but now we just want it to do the uh, pulsing, right? So back in geometry nodes, back in geometry nodes. I'm going to make my curve. It's, it's not going quite high enough. So I'm going to have it go a bit higher. And let's also have it go a bit lower, right? So if I'm isolating this, this is our thing, right? and I want it to pulse. So in other words, I want the radius to be different over time, over space, over everything, okay? So here's how we're gonna do it. So before we turn it into a mesh, I wanna play around with the radius. So I'm just gonna set curve radius, and you can see this is basically a function that multiplies or scales our uh, radius. We, we want it to be a field. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be a bit complicated, so bear with me. We're gonna use the index of the curve. Right now, the curve only has two points, The bottom and top point, the end points. But if we were to resample this, give it like, let's say 200 points, now this curve is composed of 200 points as we ascend, which means the index goes from zero to 199. If I take this and I divide it by, I mean, I guess 199, but let's, well, whatever, let's say 200. Now we have a map that goes from zero to one, or you could use, you could use like curve parameter or something like that, but I'm, I'm just gonna do it manually. Mm. You know what, let's just use curve parameter, to be honest. If you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe it's called spline parameter now, yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, we have a node here that will literally tell us the factor as we go from one point to the other, but we still need to upsample this to a lot of points. So what I'm thinking is, if we send this through a color ramp, let's just do a bit of testing, we take this, we connect it to the set curve radius, Yes, we should be seeing some modification here. So as I bring this up, you can see it's getting skinnier, a little hard to tell. Maybe it will be easier if I make this a huge number, like five. You can see now it's getting uh, skinnier and thicker and we're controlling the radius uh, in this way. Uh, so what I wanna do is I wanna create two black points and one white point, so it's kind of pinching this in the middle. I'm gonna use the color ramp to get it much closer. So like 0 0.55, 0 0.45, they're both hugging 0.5 symmetrically. So you can see we kind of have this pulse here. Oh, I did not do that correctly. Should have told me. Uh, so you can see we have this pulse here uh, that we can control by just offsetting our color ramp. As you can see, we have this pulse. Uh, we need to kind of shape it and uh, make it repeat and all of that. So first of all, to shape it, make it bigger, I'm going to take um, our color ramp and I'm just gonna multiply our result by making to make it bigger. So. There we go, there's our pulse. It kind of looks like a diamond. If you want it to not look like a diamond, play with these settings. So ease gives us a um, kind of a teardrop. Cardinal is actually interesting. It will give us, um, I, don't, I don't really know. Is it like a sine function or something like that? Who's to say? I find ease to look pretty good. And also let's not just multiply, but multiply add, just so that there's a tiny bit of kind of like filament. I've been 3D printing, so I'm thinking in terms of filament. Um, on the top and bottom. 
Uh, only other issue is now when we add, eventually we're gonna run out of pulse, right? So it's gonna go and then it disappears and it doesn't come back up the top. Uh, so we need to make this repeat. A simple way to do that is if we're dealing with a zero to one interval where we're adding, just set it to fraction. This will make it loop, okay? You don't need to worry about what it means, but basically if a number goes outside zero to one, it gets remapped into that interval. Such that now when we connect this to time, and we could kind of remap the speed of this, we get this a uh, nice pulsing effect. And let's see what that looks like. So this is gonna be the brightest part, and it's kind of like, it looks cool. It's kind of like this light that's uh, moving. And if in fact, what we can try to do is make this line even skinnier. So most of the light is coming from that pulse. So it really feels like it's ascending and descending and all of this. And we could even get fancier. We could say like have the color change as we go, but because I didn't do that for the original, I won't do it here. So really this is the basic geometry nodes setup, right? In reality, it's nothing too complicated, but when you render it and you have all the lighting and all that, it looks dope. So now let me do a save. I'm gonna call it available on Patreon because as you'll find out at the end of the tutorial, I won't talk about it yet. You can just download the blend file if you click the link in the description. But um, what am I focused on right now? Oh yes, making it look good. So we need to put the camera in a correct spot. So I think what I did for the original is I kind of had a, a curved circle. You could do this cleaner. You could even do it with geometry nodes. Uh, but this curved circle is basically a path where I want my camera to be always pointed at the middle. Uh, so for our camera, first of all, where is our camera? Camera? Whatever. I'm going to isolate it, so, or I'm going to move it back to zero. So here's our camera. Uh, you want to zero this out because uh, we're going to have it follow the path of the curve, and it doesn't work well if you have coordinates there. Uh, so I'm going to add a follow path constraint to the Bezier circle. So you can see now it's revolving around the circle. And I also want it to face the correct direction, so I'm gonna add a damped track. I always get this one confused, so bear with me. So I'm gonna add an empty to roughly the middle of the scene. Our camera is gonna use this damped track empty, so now it's always gonna face the empty. Make sure this is set to follow curve, so it's kind of tangent to it. And then you just wanna keep clicking these until one of them's right. It seems like this is close and then you just rotate it like that. Okay, make this a bit scaled out. And we can always, uh, now that we know our composition, we can always kind of modify it a little. And by that I mean like moving the transform so that the second one's a bit closer and moving our Bezier circle. But you wanna be careful with that. Okay, so this looks like roughly the correct composition. We'll play with it a bit more. Um, and we want our camera to not just be at the spot that it's at, but also to revolve. So let's make sure our setup's correct. Yeah, there we go. So the damped track is what's gonna let us keep facing it. So for this, we can just add a hash frame, like a normal driver, and it's just gonna keep spinning. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks dope. Okay, a final kind of quality of life things to make it look dope is um, depth of field is immediately gonna help. So let's just do it. Depth of field, focus on the empty in the middle with very little, you know, focus plane distance. So that's gonna make it look cool. Um, motion blur is also gonna make it cool, look cool if you don't have that already. So let's render a frame here, let's say. Let's see what that looks like. So something like that. And with the depth of field and the motion blur and all this, it really kind of comes together. If anything, I want to up the motion blur. See if that works. There we go. And then the rest of this is basically going to be basic uh, compositing. And I won't go over that uh, here, but just so you know, the rough tricks are these. You want it to glow more and you want it to um, feel more like, like it's coming at you. So use a lens distortion. This is the one everybody always uses. Set these numbers to 0.1 or 0.2. It's gonna add some chromatic aberration. And then also throw it through a glare node set to fog and maybe a little less intense. So before, after, and uh, you render this thing and it's gonna end up looking like, I mean, here are the settings I picked, right? But you can see how one kinda comes from the other. 
So either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial. How long did we go for? I don't know why I'm always fixated. 15 minutes, I'm happy with that. Um, okay, okay, so we made it through. The closet's looking creepy as fuck. I'm trying to point at it, it's very difficult. Um, we made it through. This is the part of the tutorial where I pimp out Patreon, but wait, uh, this might be worth your while. So if you click the link in the description, you can join my Patreon where, there, Patreon where there's 720 some people. It always changes at the beginning of a month. Uh, but why are 720 people funding this channel and the CG Matter channel? Well, one, it's the most direct way to keep these tutorials free for everybody. So thank you, 720 people. But uh, you get benefits in return. So when you go to the Patreon, uh, you can get early access to tutorials. So today I'm going to post this video, but it's going to be available tomorrow. Um, for patrons, it's going to be available today. So you could watch it early. Uh, you get blend files like this one. I'll give you the original blend, um, the one that I made that I actually rendered. Uh, you And also any blend file I've made over the last you know couple years since 2019 and exclusive tutorials that I post every once in a while. I did two in the month of April. So check those out. Uh, but really, if you want to support this channel and CG Matter, it is the best way to do it. And thank you so much to the people who are currently uh, active patrons. And thank you for making it all the way through the end of the video. You have good retention span. And uh, that's it.